Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson where today we're talking about ratios and proportions. So first of all, a ratio is a comparison of two quantities using division, always expressed in simplest form as either A to B, so using the word two, A to B this way using a colon in between the two values, or A over B, where B is never equal to zero because we know we can't divide by zero. So I could have a ratio that says three to four, five to eight, I wouldn't want to write a ratio as, let's say, 10 to 15, because that's not in simplest form. Instead of writing 10 to 15, you would write it as 2 to 3. So it's a comparison of two quantities using division, always in simplest form. An extended ratio is where we compare three or more quantities, such as A to B to C. Now, this is new. So this you've already learned about a ratio for years now. But now, an extended ratio compares more than just two items. So A to B to C, which contains the ratios A to B, B to C, and A to C, which should kind of remind you about the transitive property that we used um, in the last few chapters. So if I have a comparison here, then I really have these three built-in ratios in that extended ratio. Proportions. You've been dealing with proportions for many years now. So we know an, a proportion is an equation stating two ratios are equal to each other. So it's just a fancy name for an equation where basically you have two fractions set equal. Solve by cross products. Now cross products is just one of the methods we can solve a proportion. There's of course definitely other methods that we can use. It says if A over B is equal to C over D, then AD is equal to BC. And this is just an example of how we can use cross products to solve a proportion. A times D gets set equal to B times C. And this is the result that we end up getting and then we would just solve for our variable. So now let's just write some ratios and let's make sure our ratios are in simplest form. It says a smoothie made of 20 pieces of fruit uses five strawberries. So we know the total amount of fruit is 20. We know five of those pieces of fruit are strawberries. So if I said write the ratio from strawberries to the smoothie. So strawberries is five. The amount of fruit in the smoothie is 20. And five to 20 can definitely be simplified to 0.25 or one to four. So I'm gonna just note either one of them is fine. So you can write the ratio in either one of these ways, decimal or the simplified ratio version. Strawberries to non-strawberries. So if there's five strawberries, that means that there's 15 non-strawberries, which is 0.3 repeating, or in the simplified ratio form, one to three. Non-strawberries to smoothies. Well, we know there's 15 non-strawberries to 20 pieces of the uh, fruit in the smoothie. So 15 to 20 is either 0.75, or we would call it three to four. Smoothie to strawberries. So you can always take the total and then relate it to one of the parts of the whole. So 20 to 5 would just simply be 4. You can call it 4. You can call it a ratio of 4 to 1. Either one is fine. Smoothie to non-strawberries. So 20 to 15 is 1.3 repeating or 4 to 3. And then non-strawberries to strawberries is just this five to 15 in reverse. And so it's five, uh, 15 to five, which is three, or you can call it three to one. So either is fine. Okay, so now solving proportions. I mentioned that cross products is just one of the ways we can solve a proportion. And you've already learned about these strategies before in middle school, algebra one, things like that. But this is just a little refresher. So if I have X over three is equal to 10 over 12, I could use my cross products x times 12 is 12x, 3 times 10 is 30, divide both sides by 12, and I get 2.5. Nice, clean, simple. I can always also look for what's called a common multiplier. So I notice I have a 3 as a denominator and a 12 as a denominator. Well, how do I turn a 3 into a 12? I multiply by 4. So if the denominator gets multiplied by 4, then I would simply multiply my numerator by 4. So this means 4 times this x should be equal to 10. And if I have that equation, I also simply get 2.5. So you can look for a common multiplier. Sometimes that's not the case. If the denominator there was five, five to 12, it's not going to, be, going to be a friendly common multiplier to use. You can also simplify your fractions. And sometimes this gives you the answer right away. And sometimes it just helps you work with smaller values in your numerator and denominator and make some of the mental math easier to do after. So 10 over 12, I should notice, I could simplify that to five, six, so now 
I could either use cross products with x over 3 equals 5 over 6, or I could use the common multiplier. I could say, well, the only way, the way you get from 3 to 6 is multiplying by 2. So what number multiplied by 2 gives me 5? And again, I could get 2.5. Or I could do cross products. x times 6 is 6x. 3 times 5 is 15. And if I do 6x equals 15, I'm going to get 2.5. The last method is to convert any of your fractions to decimals. So 10 twelfths is actually a repeating decimal, 0 0.83, and the 3 is repeating. If you were to divide these in your calculator, so 10 divided by 12, and keep that decimal fresh in your calculator, don't round it, don't cut it off, and then multiply both sides of your equation by 3 so that these 3 simplify each other out, and you're really just doing that decimal multiplied by 3, you will also still get 2.5. Now, if you round 0 0.83 and you cut it off, you're not going to get that exact value. So always leave a repeating decimal fresh in your calculator and then do the work from there. So now I have eight proportions for us. If you feel like you can solve these proportions on your own, please pause the screen. I'm going to move my face. Please pause the screen and give these a shot and then press play and check to see if you got them right. If you feel like you need to follow along with me, then of course do. I'm going to be using cross products for each one of these, and it, the directions also say round to the nearest hundredth if necessary. So we're going to round two places after the decimal if we end up getting a decimal that's longer than it. So again, if you want to pause, try these out, and then press play. Go for it. Otherwise, follow along with me. So if I use my cross products here, it would be 8.1 times x equals now 6 times 3.4 is 20.4. Divide both sides by 8.1, and I get 2.52. Now with this one, when I do, actually let's do the problem below it. 5x over 6 equals 2 over 4.7. Uh, so 6 times 2 is 12, and then 5x times 4.7 is 23.5. Divide both sides by 23.5, and I get 0 0.51. Now the next one, and actually all of the rest of these problems, you're going to notice that the expression in either the numerator or denominator or one of one or both fractions is actually a binomial. So what has to happen here is when you do cross products, you're still going to do 3 times 5 as normal and get 15. But when you do 4 times x plus 1, you have to make sure you multiply the 4 by the x and the 1. So something that I generally do is I will put parentheses around my binomial expression. That way when I cross multiply, it looks like this. So four times the entire quantity of x plus one equals 15. Now I could divide both sides by four on both sides. I could distribute the four and then solve. Either way, you are going to get the same result of 11 fourths or what is that? That's 2.75. So I'm just gonna write that out. So fraction or decimal is fine. So the next one below it, same idea. If I do cross products, 3 times 7 is 21, but then I have to do 8 times the entire x minus 3. And so it's 8 times x minus 3 equals 21. Again, I did 3 times 7 to get 21. Distribute my 8, add 24, divide by 8, and I get 5.63. Now, this next problem, you're going to see you have two sets of binomials. So you're going to do 4 times x plus 3 in parentheses, and then 5.5 times this entire x plus 2. And so when we do that, we have parentheses on both sides of our equation, and then the rest is just basic solving equation skills. So distribute the 5.5, distribute your 4, solve for x, and we get 2 thirds or 0 0.67. And again, I know I'm going very quickly through the solving steps because we should be experts at solving. We're in geometry now, so this is not a big deal. How about this next one to the right? So 3x times 5 is 15x, and then negative 8 times 4x minus 2. So now this looks like 15x equals negative 8 times 4x minus 2. Distribute the negative 8, add 32x, divide by 47, and we get 16 over 47. And of course, if I want my decimal equivalent, 16 divided by 47, 
I would call it 0 0.34. Okay, last two. So five gets multiplied by x plus one, two gets multiplied by x minus four. Okay, use my distributive property, start to solve. So I subtracted two x, subtracted five, and I get x equals negative 13 thirds, which is negative 4.3 repeating. And then this last one, negative 2 times 4x is negative 8x, and then 2 times 2x plus 3. And we end up getting negative 1 half, which of course is negative 0 0.5. Okay, so that's solving proportions. So now we're going to take a look at extended ratio problems. So extended ratio problems are very interesting. So it says here in triangle ABC, the ratio of the angles is three to four to five. Find the measure of each angle. So the ratio of the angles is three to four to five, not the sides. It's not sides of three, four, and five. It's just the ratio of the angles. So I'm gonna show you how we set this equation up. We're gonna let X represent the angle measure. Okay, let's represent the angle. So basically, 3x, okay, plus uh, 3x. So this is going to be 3x to 4x to 5x. That's my ratio. So 3 times an angle to 4 times an angle to 5 times an angle. And what we should know is that all the measures of an ang a triangle are always going to add up to 180. So 3x plus 4x plus 5x should be equal to... 180. Okay, so all of those angles, 3x, 4x, and 5x add up to 180. <clears throat> and now we have a basic equation to solve. So 3x plus 4x plus 5x is 12x. Divide both sides by 12 and we get x equals 15. But we're not done. x just represents the value of the angle. But remember, it the ratio of the three angles is 3 times x, 4 times x, 5 times x. So my angle measures would be 3x, which becomes 45 degrees. The 4x is now 60, because 3 times x, uh, 15 is 45. 4 times 15 is 60. And then 5 times 15 is 75. And if I was to add these up, I'm getting 180 degrees. So these would be my three angle measures. So you take this x value, you go back and you substitute it in for each angle, and you get your result. Okay, let's take a look at some of these problems. It says in triangle DEF, the ratio of the angles is five to 12 to 13. Find the measure of each angle. So we would set it up the same way. So then five X plus 12 X plus 13 X equals 180, which means 30 X equals 180, which gives us X equals six. And then if I want to find my angle measures, I go back and I plug in a six for each one of these. So five times six gives me 30. The 12 times six gives me 72. And the 13 times six gives me 78. And of course, these will add up to 180. Now we're going to talk about a triangle and we're not going to relate it to the angle measures. Angle measures, you always add up to 180 in a triangle. But now we're going to talk about the sides of a figure. And also, by the way, if you were doing a quadrilateral, let's say an extended ratio of four angles, you would, of course, set it equal to 360. If it was a pentagon, you would set it equal to 540. If it was a hexagon, you would set it equal to 720 and so on. So here, the ratio of the sides. Now, anytime you're talking about the sides, you're always going to be given a perimeter measure. So the ratio of the sides is 2 to 3 to 4 with a perimeter of 144. So instead of setting it equal to 180, you're setting up the same extended ratio, but now equal to 144. You're going to follow the same procedures for solving. And then, of course, once you get X, you go back and you plug in 16 in for X for each one. So 2 times 16 is 32. 3 times 16 is 48. 4 times 16 is 64. And if I add these up, I will get 144. Last one, same idea with a perimeter problem. The ratio of sides is 4 to 5 to 5 with a perimeter of 217. Sorry, I had to fix some things up. So 4x plus 5x plus 5x. It's fine that 5x gets duplicated, 
Um, this should tell us definitely if there's two sides that are the same. It's an isosceles triangle. Find the measure of each side. So I'm going to follow my regular routine. I get 15.5, which is also fine. I don't want you to think getting a decimal means it's wrong. We've had just nice numbers before. And so 4 times x is 62. And then, of course, my 5x's, I get the same result of 77.5. And all three of these numbers add up to 217. Well, I know there's a lot of information here. I hope it was helpful for you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.